Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Jimmy and welcome to my new tutorial. So in this video I'm going to be going over the dodge and the burn tools in Adobe Photoshop CS5 and a few of their features and things you can do with them. Now if you're using a version like CS3, 4 or 6 or a later version if you're watching this in the future, um, it should easily be translatable into any of those so you should be able to follow along without any trouble. So what I'm going to be showing you in this is quickly how it can be applied to three different types of photos and hopefully it gives you some cool ideas and hopefully you find it useful. So let's jump right into it. The first thing we're going to have to do is uh, create two new layers. So to do this we're going to go up to layer, new and go layer. Now we want to call this first one dodge. We want to set the mode to overlay. Now we want to click this fill with overlay neutral color which is 50% gray. Now after trying to find out how to do an effect last week I came across a tutorial of a guy showing how to do it this way and I thought I'd share it with you guys so hopefully it helps you out. So now that we've got this first layer, what we're going to do is duplicate it by pressing Ctrl J. We're going to double click on the name and go burn. And now we've got our two separate layers. Now you can do this all on the same layer. However, I think it's probably better doing it on two separate layers so you can, you know, alter the opacity of both after you've finished. Okay, so now what we're going to do is hide our burn layer for now, select our dodge layer, and we're going to grab our dodge tool. Now for our range we want it set to midtones and our exposure we want it set to 10. And now that we've done this we're going to zoom in and what we pretty much want to do is paint over all of the highlights in our picture. Now it's not really going to show up too well on this photo since you know the lighting I used already makes the highlights and the shadows pop out quite a bit and the editing I used helps it do that as well. Um, however it should give you a basic idea of where we're going with this effect. So what we're going to do is just zoom right in and paint over all of these highlights. Now it's better to have your exposure set to a lower value and if you paint over the same thing multiple times you can see it's going to get brighter and brighter. It's better to do it that way than trying to use a higher value and then worrying about lowering the opacity on it. Now that we've done that we're going to decrease our brush size using our square brackets and just kind of paint over all of these highlighted parts and you'll see the effect we're going to get in just a second. So obviously take your time a lot more than I am, I'm just rushing through this so I don't have a huge tutorial to upload, I prefer to try and keep my tutorials as short as possible and do a little bit of work on the fingers and the knuckles here. And that's probably good enough for this example, it'll be more clear on the second example so give me a sec to get to that one. Now what we're going to do is zoom back out and we'll enable our burn layer, select that and grab our burn tool. So now we've done that, we're going to zoom back in and pretty much paint over all of the shadows. So for starters, we'll go under the ear here. Now the burn tool seems to be a bit stronger than the dodge tool, so you might need to lower your percentage a little bit more, otherwise it could look a bit, bit strong. We'll go over the nose here. And what this is doing, it's pretty much just adding a lot more definition to the photo. It's making the highlights pop out, it's making the shadows pop out. And you're going to notice everything is kind of looking a bit more enhanced and all the details looking a bit better than they actually are. So now that we've done that, we can go ahead and paint on each side here. And paint up through here. And this is a really, really quick job on that part, especially I might actually... Don't worry about that, I might just do this one, do a bit under here. Um, so now if we hide both of those layers, you'll see that the effect we get. Now especially look up on this bone here as well as um, up on his ear and up on his face. You can see it just really makes the highlights and all the shadows pop out a bit more. It's going to add a bit more of a cooler effect to your portraits. Um, so obviously take your time with it. It's not too noticeable on this example like I said. It'll be better on a normal portrait, um, but this is the only one that I really have at the moment. Okay, so for this second example, I'll show you this picture here, which I finished yesterday. You can see if we toggle on my dodge and burn layers here, just have a look at uh, the couch here. You can see all the highlights, the cushion kind of gets this nice glowing effect. Same with these statues over here. And uh, these shadows kind of pop out a little bit more. And it's just a cool way to, you know, enhance a little bit of detail as well as on the coffee table here. Now I'll zoom in on these flowers here. And these shadows kind of look a bit unrealistic here on this one especially, but you can't really notice that when you zoomed out. But if we, you know, toggle those on and off, you can see it adds, enhances these shadows, enhances these highlights, adds a nice glowing effect to them from the window. 
So it's just stuff like that you can do with it and it comes in handy for pretty much anything. Now the last example is this car photo here which I'll show you quickly. Now this has already had the dodge and the burn to it so what I do from here is going to look overdone just so you know. But um, we're going to go up to layer, new layer and we're going to again create our dodge and our burn layers. So set this to overlay and fill with overlay neutral color. Control J to duplicate then we'll call this one burn. Now on car photos, it's a really cool way to add a bit of a glossy look to your photos. Uh, so you can see on this part here, as well as um, this scoop here on the bonnet, if we grab our dodge tool and kind of paint over here, and then you can paint over the top here. Now make sure you, you know, take your time with it. Don't do what I'm doing. Um, so really go in, uh, be a bit patient with it. Make sure you're getting everything really accurate and really nicely along the lines and it's going to make it look a whole lot better than it's looking uh, for me. So you can see in the example since it's already had it done to it, you can't really tell that it's had it done to it. The car just looks a lot nicer than it did before I did it in my opinion. So you can also do it on all of these highlighted parts here. You don't just need to do it in you know those darker ones up there. You can do it in these reflections here to make them pop out. Uh, you can do it up on the side mirrors here to make them look a bit shiny. Then we'll grab our burn tool and pretty much do the exact same thing. So on this side, you can see it's going to make it look like they're popping out a bit more. We can go under here and again, going to make it look like it's popping out. And then here as well. I might redo that. And then under here. And yeah, that's probably all I worry about showing you. So now if we just toggle those on and off, you can see the effect it gives, makes it look a little bit more shiny, a little bit more glossy, makes the car look cleaner, makes everything look a bit better in my opinion. So that is pretty much it. So remember to take your time with it and you will be happy with the result, I'm sure. And uh, thanks very much for watching. So if you did like this video or you found it helpful, be sure to hit that thumbs up button to help my channel out and spread the video around. Um, you can share it on your Facebook if you think anyone, you know, will find it useful. Um, otherwise, if you'd like to see future tutorials, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. And I'm making plenty of Lightroom, Photoshop, After Effects, and Sony Vegas tutorials. If you'd like to see me cover something specific, leave it in the comments below. But at this point, I might be going over masking in After Effects next week if I can't think of something better. So thank you very much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.